What is up, YouTube? That's the here today, and I'm proud to be bringing you guys my singles draft for this season of the WBE. We made a little bit of a trailer last week showing that I was in the WBE, but I didn't really get to explain what that is. So WBE stands for World Battle Entertainment. They're doing two formats this season. It's a 10-week season featuring a bunch of singles and a bunch of doubles. And as you can kind of see, I'll be playing singles this time. I'm super excited to be showing you guys my draft. For those of you guys who don't know what a draft is, draft Pokemon is where I'm in this league with like 16 other creators who you can see linked in the description of this video. And uh, each of us are going to be taking turns picking a Pokemon. We get, I think, 10 picks you can see right here. And uh, from there, we get to have like a 10-week season where we battle each other, then go to a playoffs, and hopefully the person who drafts the best team and the best player will win. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over my my draft and so what this is like I said it's me picking these Pokemon in order one at a time and actually I just want to give a little bit of a stipulation before we get into the draft we were allowed to make changes at the very end of the draft so uh, the draft that I actually ended up drafting was a lot different than the draft that I originally drafted I'll be showing you guys what original picks I had and what I changed them to at the very end of the draft but I want to direct you guys to the question of the day and that is are you excited for the WBE if you guys have any questions about it let me know in the comments I'll do my best to answer and uh, let me know at the end of the video what you think about my team I think all the coaches is all the ones that are linked in the description of this video all have all of their drafts up by now so you can go see what everyone drafted and so hopefully we'll be able to see how my team stacks up also let me know if you want to see me do a full review breakdown of every single coach's team so let me know if you want to see stuff like that let me know if you want to see more analysis let's get right on into the draft though you guys can kind of already see even though I have the logo blocking it that my first Pokemon drafted is gonna be not Mimikyu I spoiled the thing Kingdra, Lamau. So let's start off talking about Kingdra. Kingdra, remember guys, I know we're a VGC channel, but we're talking about singles. Kingdra in singles. It gets Swift Swim. You know, back in the day of Gen 4, back when I played a lot of singles, like Drizzle and Swift Swim things were banned. Like they were not legal. You couldn't have it. You had to hard cast your rain. And back in Gen 4, Rain was a solid option. This thing gets a bunch of really, really good abilities. It gets Swift Swim, but also Sniper, which we're going to be talking about much later as we get into the draft. I think Kingdra's a really, really good Pokemon. And the way the draft is set up, I should actually talk about this. You were able to get one Tier 1 Pokemon. You were able to get uh, one Tier 2 Pokemon, you can see. You were able to get two Tier 3s, uh, four Tier 4s, and three Tier 5s. So, um, like, a good example is... Kingdra and Pelipper were both tier 2. So it's not possible to get Kingdra Pelipper, but it is possible to get Kingdra and another Pokemon that sets the rain. But yeah, Kingdra with Swift Swim, really, really good. The way that we're going to be playing this team, you can tell we're going to sort of build a rain core, is super hyper aggressive. Dragon Water typing, 95 uh, base stats across the board except for speed. This Pokemon is absolutely amazing, and I expect it to be the MVP of my team for the whole season like every single team that fights me is going to be packing a ton of power to take up my kingdra so it's going to be up to me to build amazing ev spreads and have correct item choices so i can actually still get the kingdra to perform the way it's supposed to but i'm very excited to use kingdra kingdra is a bit of a fan favorite on this channel a lot of people like seeing the kingdra if you want to see some kingdra hype stuff you want to learn more about kingdra let me know in the comments below and we're going to move on to the next pokemon which already kind of got uh like spoiled i guess and that's uh mimikyu it's Mimikyu. So right off the bat, I want to talk a little bit about not necessarily my draft order, but my draft picks. Because like I said, I drafted a different team and actually changed uh, a bunch of them. Like these two Pokemon, Mimikyu and Kingdra, they were actually different Pokemon in my original draft. I guess I'll say what they were. They were Blissey and Celebi. So I completely changed my team to a rain team uh, at the end of the original draft. But the things I changed to because um, we are allowed to change Pokemon throughout the course of the actual season. You get four changes, I think, three or four changes. Uh, I changed, I picked a lot of my Pokemon, and I kind of hate drafted them. We're going to talk a lot about hate drafting, and, um, and what hate drafting really is, is picking up something just so your opponents can't have it. Like, because I have Mimikyu, no one else in the draft can have Mimikyu, and Mimikyu's a Pokemon that hard counters Kingdra. Like... If I'm all set up, ready to go, I got my rain, I'm ready to go fast, they run a Mimikyu, I can slam a, a Surf into it or a Scald into it, but it'll just break the skies and it'll kill me with a player up and I lose the game. Even worse, he might be able to set up a Swords Dance and then kill me with Shadow Sneak because there's no Dynamax in Smog on 6v6 singles. I don't know if I actually mentioned this. This is 6v6 singles. That's what WB singles is. 
smog on singles. So uh, a lot of the picks I actually did were defensive picks. I get like a standard core of like Kingdra, a couple other Pokemon, and then from there, uh, I take away Pokemon from my opponents so they can't actually draft them against me. It would be really unfortunate to, you know, like make a team to like beat someone and then like a couple days before the draft, they use one of their picks and they switch in a Pokemon that completely counters me. And so picking something up like Mimikyu makes it just takes away one of those options that would have like hard countered you're gonna see as the team fills out you're gonna, be, you're gonna realize like wow Mimikyu would have tore me apart also Mimikyu helps me deal with the Pokemon that check Kingdra kind of like you know Dragapult and uh you know a bunch of other really really important things so Mimikyu solid pick you've seen a lot of Mimikyu uh picks on my channel so far I love using Mimikyu in 3v3 singles and I think it's just as good uh we're gonna see as my draft kind of fills out uh I'm gonna be using like uh, for example, let's look at the next Pokemon and I'll talk a little bit more about it. So the next Pokemon's gonna be, obviously it has to be Politoed, you know? We, we don't really like using Politoed on this channel. I think Pelipper's much better, but again, you could not pick Pelipper with uh, Kingdra because they're both tier two, Politoed's a tier three, so it's our Swift Swim setter. And uh, sorry, it's our, it's our rain setter so our Kingdra can use Swift Swim. And so uh, one of the ways that we're gonna kind of build the team is like I can go Politoed and they can go whatever their lead is. Maybe they'll set rocks or whatever. Politoed will trade one for one with their lead maybe hopefully right then kingdra will come out and kingdra will get like a revenge ko and then maybe another ko after that and so kingdra hopefully will trade uh one for two right so that means that if polytro trades one for one we each have five and if kingdra trades one for two you know they go down to i have four they have three and then i send out my mimikyu mimikyu is another pokemon famous for going one for two you know i go down to three and they go down to one right so you see how that kind of works i get to a situation where if i'm playing hyper aggressive with this team just through these three core Pokemon, um, I'm able to get a situation where I have three left in the bank and they have just one. And so if they have just one, it's a lot easier to, you know, splash something else that might be able to have priority moves or even just be a Pokemon that trades very, very efficiently. Like these three Pokemon uh, together trade very efficiently. And yeah, there's a lot of things that can beat them, but that's what the rest of the picks are, uh, you know, for. I think Polish is really, really good because yeah, it gets uh drizzle but it can do so many cool things i expect to use a lot of scarf specs toad maybe even run um you know some like wide lens or some like other items maybe like a damp rock there's a bunch of cool things we do with polytoad don't expect me to run the same polytoad set every single week you can expect me to run different stuffs every single week with this polytoad so polytoad is the third pick the fourth pick this is where uh that hate drafting kind of comes in right we're talking about things that can really throw a wrench in our strategy. What's one Pokemon that can really, really just decimate what we're trying to do with Rain and completely grind us to a halt? Like, let's say I leave Politoed and I do whatever I want and then they kill my Politoed. I'm ready to send in my Kingdra. And what if they send out, like, a Tyranitar? That would suck, right? That would really, really suck if, like, they were to send out a Tyranitar. So let's uh let's go to Tyranitar, which is what I, I took next, right? I think it's I think it's Tyranitar. Give me, give me a sec here. There it is, so Titar. So um, if you actually watch the official like draft reveal on Pokegames channel, I'll have a link to that in the description of this video if you want to see what other uh, people who are in this draft have to say. They talk about Tyranitar on my team, how they don't really understand what I was going for, for Titar. They talk like, yeah, you can use rocks. Yeah, it's a good physical wall. Yeah, it helps us in that Dragapult matchup. But what I really wanted the Titar for is similar to Mimikyu. Um, I, wanted poke I wanted to take away my opponent's options of like having things that could derail me. It'd really suck if I was like, a, like at this point, if like there's not that many other weather setters in the format, I can kind of just fodder my Politoed because I don't have to respect their ability to switch in and recreate weather. And remember, since there's no Dynamax, I don't have to worry about them, you know, Dynamaxing and using Max Rockfall, Dynamaxing and using Max Flare. That's not an option in Smogon. So taking away my opponent's ability to have Tyranitar, yeah, Tyranitar is weak to the uh, like water attacks that I could use, but like him setting up Sandstorm could really, really derail me. There's also a bunch of other really cool things I can do. Um, I don't actually have to play with Politoed, like Drizzle Politoed, Swift Swim Kingdra. I can play like Sniper Kingdra and not use Politoed some weeks. You're gonna see my team has the ability to go for both Sand and Rain. And so a like, dual weather core is actually really, really unique and it gives my team a lot more versatility. I feel a lot of the players in this draft, and also I'll say this is my first draft ever. Um, I've never drafted Pokemon before. I've never done this before, but I have been playing a Pokemon for a long time. So I know that like situations where you can only do one thing, even though that's a really good thing, good players will find their way around it. But with my team, there's so many different things it can do that you have to respect, right? And so it's really, really hard for them to just do the right play. The right play becomes really subjective and uh, it's hard to find the right play because there's so many different things that can happen. Like I don't even have to use Sand Titar, right? I can go 
Swift Swim Kingdra, I can go uh, Politoed with uh, Drizzle, and I can go Unnerve Titar and just have Titar be like a Rock Setter or like a really, really good Dark Coverage or like a Choice Scarf Mon or a Sash Mon or a Weakness Policy Mon. There's so many cool things Tarantar can do and I'm super excited to use because this is definitely one of my favorites. So hopefully you guys like the draft so far. We got Titar, Kingdra, Mimikyu, Politoed. I will say right now that these Pokemon were four different Pokemon in my original draft, which I will be showing at the end of this video. And I want to talk, I'll talk about what that draft was supposed to do and how the hate drafting that happened, like people kept taking my picks. And like I said, that was my first ever like draft. So like I had to like struggle to build a team. And then I realized that team could really only do one thing. And that's why I switched it out during the week zero picks. And so we're going to be going to the next pick, which is pick numero uno five. And let's see what it is. Survey says it's Fallings. So a lot of people probably disagree with the Fallings choice here. I know Pokeam really disagreed with it. Um, he was not a fan of the Fallings pick. He said I picked it way too early. And uh, Fallings is actually just like a really, really good Pokemon, I think. Um, I think it's really good in VGC. It gets Defiant. And the choices for what I wanted to use, my tier five picks, um, let's look at my team so far. We have Special Attacker Kingdra, Special Attacker Politoed. Uh, Mimikyu's a physical attacker, Titar's a physical attacker, but more often than not, we're going to see my team flush out with a lot of special attackers, and so I need that big physical attacker with the ability to sweep to bring back games. A lot of people like to see Fallings as like kind of like a Bisharp because it gets Defiant, and they have very similar like attack and speed tierings and kind of typings. Like they're both relatively weak to similar things, I would say. You know, Fallings takes super effective damage from Fairy, Bisharp takes neutral damage from Fairy, but both of them get murked by like huge Fairy special attacks, right? So uh, they're very similar in that regard. I don't see Fallings like a Bisharp. I see Fallings more like a Volcarona, where if I get up a um, No Retreat, I know I can't switch anymore, but why would I want to switch when I can just sweep you, right? No Retreat gives us that bulk, similar to like a Quiver Dance user. It gives us that special B, that defense boost, the attack, the SP boost. And I don't also need to use No Retreat. Like I'm not item dependent. I think there's a lot of cool things Fallings can do. And I feel that it's just a Pokemon that's not fully utilized in the way that I want to play my team. Remember, we're also playing a very hyper-aggressive team, and so I think always being able to come out with Pokemon that command dominance of the board and force your opponent to respect you immediately, that's how I like to play. If you like if you like seeing people that want to hit hard, hit fast, set up sweeps, and like force your opponent to always respect the current mon that you have on the board, instead of people that are playing like stall switches and stuff like that, like, I'm the guy to watch. Like, I'm going to have the craziest games that I'm going to be showing you guys. And Fallings is a Pokemon that definitely forces my opponent, you can see when I flush out the rest of the team, to respect my lead options and respect my six options. Because, like, you may think that, like, Fallings is weak against, like, uh, it's weak against Fairy, just like Titar and, uh, what is it, Kingdra. Like, I have a big Fairy weakness here, but, like, what fairies exist. Remember, it's a draft league. So, like, not every team can have Togas. Not every team can have those big Fairy mods right? And so, like, maybe I have a bad week against the team that has Togekiss, but, like, Togekiss is also weak against Rocks. Togekiss is also has a bad matchup versus Mimikyu, and Fallings can be made to deal with that Togekiss. It gets Iron Head, it gets Rock Slide. Uh, Togekiss can't really deal with Fallings once we already have a no retreat up. So, I think it's all about, like, matchups and how you want to set up each Pokemon, and I, th I think Fallings is one of those Pokemon that is going to require a lot of uh, respect in the overall team preview of my team going into uh my matches versus the other coaches so the next pokemon i think this next pokemon is going to be a pretty popular one maybe you like it maybe you heard of it it's called decidueye and this is where i think my draft is finally starting to come together you're fi you're finally trying to see the things that i want to do with the draft what decidueye adds here is this is the one pokemon in my draft that's going to be a defensive pivot right so decidueye is a ghost grass type uh it gets access to so many support moves, access to priority moves, and what it really adds to the table is a defog user. Like I said, I'm playing hyper aggressive, right? I could set rocks with T-Tar if I want, but I can also just sit back, max relax, and make it so they can't rocks me, can't spikes me, can't toxic spikes me, have that defog ready to go. Also note that I don't take uh, super effective damage from said rocks or anything like that, so I can always switch this thing in and just defog away. I can go for rain dances, U-turns, uh, you know, I can go for hurricanes in the rain, poltergeist if i want to be physical this pokemon's probably gonna get brought to almost every single matchup and i feel that decidueye on average is a pokemon that's relatively low power but the fact that it's in a draft setting and that they can't have perfect coverage like not every team is a tier 1 ou team you're gonna realize that each team has like some like not tier 1 picks some uu some ru picks and decidueye is a really really good defensive pivot 
uh, for my team and it can really like if you want if I want to use like a vested one for example and not go defog that really really gives me a bulky Pokemon to switch to to mitigate some fairy damage or some electric damage or some you know any sort of damage that my team's really weak against also the things that Decidueye is weak against are heavily mitigated from the rest of my team what's weak against ice I got freaking Politoed and Kingdra take neutral damage but it's really bulky uh, what else am I weak against a bugs neutral uh, fire I'm literally using a rain team um, what else? There's another really big type of uh, ghost and dark. Oh, you mean so like my T-Tar can resist all that stuff. You can see like Decidueye works really, really well with my team. And remember, because this is smog on singles, I can use moves from previous gen. So I'm pretty sure that means I can use like Roost Decidueye and a bunch of other really, really cool stuff. So I'm super excited to use Decidueye. If this is eh. If Decidueye uh, makes you guys excited too, let me know in the comments below. If you guys have any cool Decidueye sets you might want to see me feature in the comments below. Let me know in the comments below. And we're going to look at the next Pokemon. Speaking about fan favorites, OMG. OMG, let's pop it off with Zorark. Are you starting to see where now that I have my core set of like the Kingdra, Mimikyu, Politoed, Decidueye, I can just use like my last five or so picks and kind of just make them be Pokemon that first of all, I don't want to fight against. I don't want to fight against Zorark. The Pokemon's way too good. And uh, I can use it to make it so like every single time my opponent's playing, they have to respect that every single Pokemon can be Zorark. Uh, let's just talk about a really cool situation. Let's talk about some things we've already shown that we can disguise Zorark as. We can disguise Zorark as Mimikyu. That's so good. Disguise Zorark as Decidueye. Oh, that's so good. Like, doesn't that just seem like really, really good? Because you have to respect that Mimikyu. You can't, mim you can't let Mimikyu do a lot of stuff, but the things that beat Mimikyu, right? So let's say you have a Mimikyu and they have an Excadrill, right? So they're like, cool, I'm a, I'm a Mole Breaker Ironhead that. It's like, actually, I'm Zorark. I'm going to hit you with a Choice Specs Flamethrower and you are going to get KO'd, right? And yeah, you might be Sash, but then I send in my real Mimikyu and just sort, Shadow Stick you and I win, right? So you understand the situation, like, that's one scenario where Zorark, having that above 100 base speed tiering, having access to all those different special and physical and ability to, like, set weathers and a bunch of other really, really cool things, and forcing your opponent to always respect the ability to be Zork is really, really nice. Let's talk about another scenario which I plan on doing later on in the season. So, like, let's say I want to go with, like, a Sand variant and not necessarily use a Rain variant. Um, if I were to ever lead Zorark and disguise it as Politoed, first of all, it would not set the Rain because Zorark disguised as something doesn't really, or illusioned as something doesn't really set the Rain. But um, what if I just sent out, so, like, if you were fighting my team, you were to see me send out a Politoed, you'd be like, oh, he's not setting the Rain. That's Zorark. What if I was using, like, Damp Politoed? Politoed gets other abilities other than Drizzle. And not all those abilities activate upon being sent out. So if you were to see a Politoed and be like, oh, it's not sending rain? That must be Zorark. But then what if Politoed just, like, is Politoed and, like, uses Damp Rock Hard Cast the Rain Dance or just goes for, like, a huge Specs Scald that you weren't expecting on the Zorark and Politoed's a lot bulkier than the Zorark. And so, like, the things that beat the Zorark don't necessarily beat the Politoed. And you're starting to see scenarios where we can steal games off the first couple turns of the game by baiting our opponents and misdirecting them into thinking things that, uh, you know, that they're not even wrong for, like, trying to check, right? I think that's so, so sick and really, really fun to see the ability. And I think we're going to actually use a lot of physical Zorark in this draft. I think physical Zorark might be the sauce. And I just think Zorark's just a really, really cool Pokemon that if we use correctly, provides uh, correctly speed-tiered dark typing and fire coverage to our team if we do so need to use it so really really cool to see Zorak. so we're almost done where we have two tier fours and two tier fives left and then we're going to show what my team was actually supposed to be I, I actually will say i really did draft Zorak and i really did draft Decidueye, and actually i think i really did draft fall links but the polytope mimikyu king and titar were all switched out but we're going to go into another pokemon that i actually drafted and that is you know it had to be Butterfree. You know what we're messing with. You know what we're about. You know what we're about. We are using the big Butterfree. Our mascot, the Baton Rouge Butterfree, is up. And uh, I really think Butterfree is a really, really good Pokemon in our team. Um, remember how I was talking about maintaining uh, an active board state at all times and maintaining a board that your opponent has to respect every single turn. Otherwise, they risk being set up on. Otherwise, they risk taking too much damage. Uh, Butterfree is a great Pokemon for that. We can go for Sleep Powders, and I can just set those quivers and win the game. Um, Butterfree is also another Pokemon. Like, let's talk about that initial scenario which started at the beginning of the game. If I lead Politoed and you lead something, let's say there's whatever five, let's say each of us have six mods, right? So if Politoed trades with their setter or or not, we go to five, right? And then I send out Kingdra and Kingdra trades uh, one for two, right? Kingdra's one for two. And then I send out Butterfree, right? Butterfree sets up a Sleep Powder, gets a Quiver Dance. Butterfree trades one for 
two. And then I still have like my Mimikyu in the back, which is a guaranteed, I have Mimikyu and two other Pokemon in the back, which are guaranteed gonna de be able to deal with whatever the last Mon is. And so like Butterfree provides the speed control. Uh, it provides the, uh, also Butterfree can set like Rain Dance, Butterfree can go for Sleep Powders. Butterfree can do so many things. You can't put their last Pokemon to sleep. You can't put multiple Pokemon to sleep through the Sleep Clause. But I do think Butterfree provides a lot of team synergy that a lot of people aren't really uh, thinking about. You can have a bunch of really good items, and I do expect to bring Butterfree quite a bit, and it's really cool that our mascot is Butterfree, and we're using Butterfree, so hopefully you like Butterfree. I think it's going to be a very fun Pokemon to use, and uh, if there was one, I didn't want to have to lose the Butterfree either, so like, I needed to get it. I needed to pick up our boy, so Butterfree's busted, and uh, yeah, I'm liking it a lot. So the next Pokemon on our list is going to be Boltund, and so you're starting to see like how Boltund really does fit in this team. This was supposed to be a Jolteon, uh, I did actually pick this one. I didn't have to trade for it. Uh, the person right before me stole Jolteon, and I wanted Jolteon so bad. Can you see how good Jolteon would have been on this team? Oh, 130 base speed, Volt Absorb. It gets access to, like, Yawn, Wish, uh, Volt Switch, Light Strain. Like, Jolteon would have been amazing here. So good. Bolton's almost as good. 121 base speed. The good thing that Bolton has over Jolteon is that you can go, like, a Strong Joss set or a competitive set, so it can be physical or special. I can go... I'm probably, if I use this thing, probably just going to go Banded or Spexed and just use its above average speed tearing to then uh, create like an easier pivot for me to revenge KO things and just maintain board control. Bolton's pretty good though. Uh, I think it's a pretty cool Pokemon. Like overall, I think it fits in the team very well. Um, it doesn't really get a ton of offensive coverage in the special attack slot. Like it doesn't really get like a ton of like really, really good special attacks. It gets like hyper voice. Maybe it gets shadow ball. It gets like thunder. I can go for specs thunders in the rain. That's pretty cool. And it does have above average uh, special attack and attack. So I think it's an okay Pokemon. I did really want Jolteon, but like this is a perfect example of me talking about how every single team is not going to be fully optimal. Like it's really, it's still a good Pokemon, but like I said, I wanted Jolteon. So uh, hopefully you still like Bolton here. I know Bolton's a Pokemon that a lot of people like. And I do want to say that Bolton does really fit with the, what I'm trying to go for with that like hyper aggressive, uh, you know, not really switching a lot, but like maintaining active board states that your opponent has to always deal with. They can't just eat Specs Thunders for multiple turns. Like, so if I lead Boltund and you lead a defensive Mon, if I Specs Thunder you and you're going to try and set like an Acid Armor or try and set like a Stealth Rocks and you're not a ground type or try and do literally anything, you can't eat two. And if you're going to switch away from the Boltund, like if I have Boltund, you have Togekiss and you're going to switch away. Like if you don't have a ground type, what is switching in on a Specs Thunder in the rain? And then... Like, there's no real way that the, it does over half to, like, pretty much every single switch unless it's mitigated. Even grass types take heavy damage. So, like, I do think that, uh, and you, and you also, you can't switch in those Intimidators. Note that I have Bolt Hunt and Fall Links here. You can see you have Defiant and Competitive Potential. So, like, teams that are reliant on Intimidators, uh, teams that are reliant on, like, Gyaradoses, uh, Arcanines, and Cinerors, those are going to be really hard to use against my team. And so it forces your opponent to play a lot safer. Uh, than they normally would want to play. They're not afforded the luxury of mitigating damage when they want. They can only mitigate damage when I want them to, which is which is really, really nice. So there's two picks left, and this next pick is going to be one that really does bring together the core of what my team is supposed to do. Like I talked about, our team has a lot of special attackers. We have Kingdra being mostly a special attacker, Palito being special attacker, Decidueye being potentially mixed, Zork special attacker, Bolton special attacker, Falling is physical, Butterfree special. But this next Pokemon you're going to see where the team all comes together here. It's going to be Dredna. I know it says Bolton there because uh, my slides are made incorrectly. But uh, yeah, Dredna here. Really, really good Pokemon. Uh, and also, it goes with that T-Tar very well, doesn't it? So like, yeah, we can have the um, the Swift Swim activate with the with the Dredna. But also, like, T-Tar, Rock-type, Sandstorm gives the 1.5 special defense boost to Dredna. And so, 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 so nice to see Dreadnought in this situation. Dreadnought's a really cool Pokemon because it's a water type that is not really checked by, like, things like Ferrothorn. We can superpower it. It's not really checked by grass types like uh, Rillaboom. I mean, let's be real. Rillaboom could just grassy glide, but let's talk about other grass types that are just regular grass types. We can Mega Horn those. Like, Banded, Life Orbed, Weakness Policy, Dreadnought. Very, very good Pokemon. It's a Pokemon I was probably most hyped to use in Sword and Shield, and I think it's going to work great in this team. It's one of those ones you always have to respect. I can go Sash, Vest, Weakness Policy, uh, Scarf, Band, Expert Belt. This Pokemon holds so many good sets, and I'm very, very excited to use it. And I think this one might be the Pokemon that gets the most KOs, because I feel what's going to happen a lot with this team is a lot of people are going to overprotect for the Kingdra, and that'll open them up to getting swept by the Dread. Now, the fact that I have both of them is going to make it so it's going to be really hard to wall both of them. Like, a good example is, like, five Kingdra and use Chansey, 
Well, I'm gonna have a hard time breaking if I'm using special Kingdra that week. But Bolt, or sorry, not Bolt Hunt, but uh, Dreadnought. Dreadnought don't care about your Chansey. It's coming in. Swiggity Swoody is coming for that booty. So Dreadnought's really, really nice. It goes with the T-Tart, goes with the Politoed. This was kind of my plan the whole time when I decided to switch my picks from week one over to this guy. But I really, really like Dreadnought. And we have one more tier five pick. We have one more tier five pick. And this is going to be the one that makes my team probably the most fun out of all the teams in the draft. Really, my team's super, super fun, by the way. We have Titar, fan favorite. Kingdra, everyone loves Kingdra. Decidueye, so good. Everyone loves Decidueye. Uh, Zork, people like Zork. People like Bolton. People like Fallings. People like Butterfree. And you know what else people like? People like Pikachu. Pikachu is my last pick, and you can see Pikachu so good in this team. Right? It's 90 base speed, which is a lot higher than a lot of the other teams. It also has access to Lightning Rod. can hold that Light Ball. Guys, remember the Light Ball doubles Pikachu's attack and special attack. That huge Light Ball boosted Thunder in the rain. I can go for Volt Tackles. I can go for Physical Special. Pikachu can Wish Pass. Pikachu can do a lot of stuff. A lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. It's very frail, right? But if you look at a lot of the other teams in WBE, there are teams that like can't take that much damage every single turn. One thing about my team... Every one of my Pokemon, other than my Decidueye, and potentially my Butterfree before it's set, my team deals a massive amount of damage with every single one of my Pokemon. Like, all my Pokemon either have setup moves to make them crazy, or have, like, above 110 base in their offensive stats, or some sort of crazy multiplier attached. And so Pikachu is a perfect example of that. Like, let's say I lead Politoed, and you're going to go for an electric attack. Hard switch in my Pikachu, get a lightning rod proc, and... The game's over, right? There's nothing that's switching in on a plus one thunder, right? And if you do switch in on it, well, then I'll just go for a surf next turn or a grass knot. And there's so many scenarios where Pikachu is just really, really good. I like this team. I'm actually really, really happy with it. And uh, I realized this is around the time when I was I was picking the Pikachu. I was like, man, I can't wait to change my team up because I don't think I originally, I might have originally picked the Pikachu and uh, knew that I was switching over to the rain core. And I'm going to show you guys the actual team that I originally drafted. And you're going to think that it's booty. But, like, it's only because, it's only bad because every single time I was about to pick, my pick kept getting taken from me. And so I had to get, like, second and third rate picks for a team that I wanted, which wouldn't even have been good in, like, this whole season because it was a team that only could really do one thing. So let's look at that team. It's right here. So this was the original team that I drafted. So, like, I originally picked, like, Blissey first, then Celebi, then, like, Darmanitan. And then I went into, like, my lower picks. I had to deal with Azumarill. Uh, I, so, like, I could have kept that Azumarill. I could have kept this Blissey. I could have kept this Celebi. Could have kept our Manitan. You can see I, I had Boltund already. Um, I had Decidueye. I had Zorak. I had Butterfree. Um, and I wanted Zwellius in the last slot. And that's when I realized when I was picking Zwellius, my whole plan was to kind of go for, like, maybe I can set rocks with Celebi because it gets Stealth Rocks. And uh, from there, like, Blissey could set Stealth Rocks too. But, like, I can go for, like, what is that? Sticky Web from the Ribombi, and then from there have a team that's above average speed tiering with a little bit of potential for reverse sweeping with like a Zumaro. I just didn't really like the way that team looked. Like Darman, it's too one that team's too one dimensional, right? This was the team, and Zwellis would actually have been pretty good with like a choice band after like a Sticky Web was up. But I realized like I realized because we were allowed to switch as many as we wanted for the week zero that like no one picked Rain, no one picked Mimikyu. These are things that I thought would get picked up super fast, and I was like. If no one wants these things, I'm just going to take them. So the draft that I drafted was completely different from like the one that I ended up with, but I'm much happier with the one that I ended up with. You can see like the actual like team right here is what I ended up with on the right too. So yeah, you can see like all the tier five and tier four picks. I, I just like the, I like the new team. I like the new team. I like the rain team. And the only thing that I think I might switch is we still are allowed like four switches during the season. I might switch out that Boltund for a Stoutland. If you guys want to see me use Stoutland so I can have a little bit more Sand Rush action, let me know. Because I, I really think that like Stoutland might be massive value in this team. And if you guys think I'll pick up Stoutland, I'll pick up Stoutland. But Bolton is a cool pick. It's just that I feel that because I have Pikachu already, I don't need more electric. And Stoutland, again, would also provide more fighting weakness. I already have Zorark. I already have Titar. There's already a decent amount of fighting. And Dreadnought, there's already a decent amount of fighting weakness. So like... Bolton doesn't really mitigate the fighting weakness, but like it can outspeed those Pokemon and do a lot of stuff to them. So hopefully you guys liked my team. Um, you know, you can definitely watch all the WBE content. Like I said, all of the other content creators' channels are linked in the description. There's WBE singles and WBE VGC. I decided to play singles this season. I think my team's going to do super well. Uh, my first round should be going up this Saturday versus James Beck. 
So hopefully, you know, you can check out both of our teams. I'll be streaming a lot of stuff on Twitch TV slash Shots Plus One, talking about building my team because I know who I'm going to be playing. I can go look at their team. I can go compare my speed stats, go into deep, like in-depth EV spreads, breakdown analysis and say like, oh man, his fastest Pokemon is this speed. So as long as I always outspeed that speed with these few Pokemon, I actually can put the rest of my points in a bunch of other stats. So each week's team is going to be completely made to fight the team of the person that I'm playing that week. So that's one cool thing about the WBE that you don't actually see in a lot of other formats because you're able to I'm going to be showing my building process for pretty much all of these on stream. So if you guys want to see that, uh, click the link to the Twitch stream in the description of this video. Uh, check out James's channel as well as all the other content creators' channel. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are excited. This is going to be a lot of fun. I think it's like a 10-week season and then playoffs. So hopefully we make playoffs. Other than that, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you had a good one, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.